Well, hello, and welcome back to Cajun Curiosities. This video basically depicts wedding goblets that I made for my cousin's firstborn. I made them out of uh, walnut and maple. And then I etched their names into each one and filled them with cream paint. Sit back and enjoy. I hope you like the video. So first we have the blocks of walnut. <clears throat> I glued on the maple pieces and centered them, made some center points in each end. Uh, went ahead and cut off the excess meat of the block until they looked like this, kind of like octagons, just to get rid of most of the meat. Next, we go ahead and put them on the lathe and start to turn them round. Here I'm using my uh, roughing gouge and uh, that'll get it close. And then I get a finer tool and smooth it out really nicely. Right now it's just sitting between centers and it's easy to uh, mark the distances that I imagine the cup bowl should be and where the stem will start. Um, here I'm cutting out a foot to be held by the chuck, which uh, basically I'll do most of the work on. Here I'm tightening the foot to the chuck, or the chuck to the foot, and starting to rough out my uh, goblet cup. I need to take some meat out on the stem side so that my tools can get in there and make a nice smooth curve on the bottom of the cup. You can see I'm starting to uh, shape the cup the way I imagine I'd like it to be. And just using a 3A spindle gouge to do that. And uh, it's time to go ahead and take some of the meat out of the cup. I use that fastener bit to take most of it out. I have, you can see, a white mark on my uh, tailstock chuck to make sure I don't go too deep. So here I'm measuring how far I have available and how far it's actually gone in and find I need to dig a little more. So, hope I'm not too deep. Yep, there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and hog out the inside, um, more like the shape of the outside. I'd like to be about a quarter inch thin or less, maybe three sixteenths. And uh, you can see here I'm using my half inch bowl gouge to uh, cut the bottom into a curved edge on the bottom and then scrape the sides. This is in grain and pretty hard for me. I'm, I'm not real uh, used to doing this kind of stuff, but I did a pretty good job here. And uh, I'm ready to go ahead and make the second one where I have to measure the rim, the dip, the fatness of the bowl of the cup, and try to uh, feather them all in together. You can see I've cut away most of the meat. I've finished the top part. Now I'm curving the bottom of the cup to be similar to the first cup. And when you're finished, you want to go ahead and uh, finish that major large part of the cup before you turn the, the stem down. Because the stems can get pretty narrow and when you have all that weight on the end trying to uh, polish it, you end up having risk of breaking the stem and such like that. So I've cut the stem out. Uh, the base and I'm just sanding it starting with 100 grit moving to 150 grit uh, 220 here I'll end up with some sanding sponges I think this is uh, 400 I, I moved to uh, 600 and then a thousand grit right here and um, after that process of actually building the cup I wanted to go ahead and etch it I laser etched it at the uh, military post down the road at their arts and craft place and I use this uh, cream paint. It's kind of a thicker paint 
and uh, to match the color of the maple, I went ahead and mixed white, red, and yellow. And then I put a little coat of wax on because I don't want the paint to penetrate the grain outside of the lettering. So the wax keeps it from uh, getting in the grain. And then you just take a napkin, just a regular napkin, and wipe the paint off. And with that uh, paste wax base, you know, uh, it comes off pretty easily. So there's one of them. I left the foot on it so that I could turn it later and polish it up. This is the second one. And uh, basically I use the same method. So here we are back on the lathe, uh, the etched done filled. And uh, I'm just waxing and polishing the cups and, uh, and buffing them out basically with, uh, I like to use t-shirt rags. So I cut the sleeves off my t-shirt in the summer, and then I use the sleeves all winter long <laughs> making uh, rags. Here I'm going to cut the foot off. The, the cup is basically done, and uh, I just need to cut the foot off and catch it before it falls off on the ground. Turn the lathe off, pull it on out, and there you have one cup done nice and neat. And here is Renee's cup on there and the wax that I'm using to polish it up and buff it out. Now, I will say, um, no matter how, how hard I try or, or um, how accurately I try to measure the different widths and, and distances and lengths and all that, um, one cup is going to be either thinner or thicker than the other. And in this case, um, although they were very close to identical, one definitely had a more feminine look, a thinner kind of a uh, stem, and uh, just basically you could tell one was a his and one was a hers. And uh, <laughs> if you don't look too hard, you can't tell, but uh, I could tell, and that's how I chose which one to put what name on. <clears throat> so here we are finishing up the second cup, and basically that's my video depicting how I made wedding goblets as a gift to my cousin's firstborn's wedding. I was very proud that they chose to highlight them here on the wedding cake table and hear how much they appreciated to receive a handcrafted gift by cousin Steph. Also, I heard that they actually did a couple of toasts with them, which really made me happy. Well, look, I hope you enjoyed the video, and like it says, go ahead and like and share. And don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Goodbye, and God bless.